When I was in seminary, I took a class on interreligious dialogue, basically a survey course on all of the different world religions. And we had to do a, a project for the class, and the project was basically to go to a worship service of another religion and to observe how they worshiped and what they did. So as it happened, I was assigned to go to a Seder meal at a Jewish family. And the Jewish family I went to go visit was the rabbi with his wife and his three daughters. It was something right out of Fiddler on the Roof. And they were so kind and welcoming. A beautiful meal was set out candle, the blessing cup, the bread, the matzah, was all there. The rabbi was at the head of the table, and the blessing prayers were said, and we began to eat. And then one of his daughters looked at me, and she said, now since you're studying to be a Catholic priest, I have a question for you. What is this thing called confession, anyway? I saw it on TV, and it seems like a lot of fun. I said, well, it can be, sometimes. And I explained, and then the other daughter said, yes, it seems to be so intriguing. Every time I see it on television, it's dark, and there's shadows, and there's a priest there, and it's really interesting. Tell me about it. And then the rabbi's wife chimed in and said, oi, tell me more about this confession. And the rabbi himself leaned back and said, I've always wanted to know. Tell me. And there went the evening. We didn't talk at all about Judaism. I spent the entire night talking about the Sacrament of Reconciliation. And it was a wonderful evening, but that's the memory that I have of it. People are fascinated by the Sacrament of Reconciliation. People are fascinated about why Catholics go to confession. Every time our faith is depicted in the media, usually wrongly. They always show a confessional with dark shadows. People are fascinated by the sacrament. Everybody loves it except Catholics. <laughs> We're not quite so sure about this sacrament. But it is the best held secret in the Catholic Church. It will change your life. It is a blessing. Today in our Gospel we hear Jesus giving us this parable about these two people who prayed. One of them had contrition, in other words sorrow for his sins. The other one did not. The first is a Pharisee, and the Pharisee sits up front in the temple and says, God, I thank you for making me so perfect. I am so wonderful in every way. I'm glad I'm not like these other scum over here. I pay tithes, I pay taxes, I fast. Let me count the ways, let me count the things that I do for you, God. And it's very interesting that the scripture says the Pharisee prayed to himself. He prayed to himself, not God. And then there's the tax collector in the back, and tax collectors were synonymous then as sinners. And the tax collector just beats his breast and says, have mercy on me, O God, a sinner, have mercy. One of them is justified, the other one is not. And that's the lesson about contrition and about forgiveness. You know, we have been so blessed as Catholics to have this great sacrament of confession. Like I said, the best kept secret in the Catholic Church. It is. What is confession after all? It is going to the Lord and asking for forgiveness. John chapter 20, after the resurrection, Jesus breathed on his 
apostles and says, whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins are retained, are retained. It is the most healthy thing to go and talk about what we have done. What do we tell our young people? Don't keep it inside. Talk about it. Talk about what you've done. Don't keep it in. That's what confession's all about. We talk about what we have done, and God forgives us. God has given this gift to his priests through the sacrament of holy orders to be an instrument of forgiveness. And really, this is how God works. He works through other people. He works through instruments, creating life, giving us his word, in the humanity of Christ, God works through other people, giving us all of these things. But yet when it comes to forgiveness of sins, sometimes you and I say, only God can forgive sins. I'm not going to go to a man and tell him what I've done. Well, that's not how God works. God works through you and me in any number of ways. And in the most important way, in the forgiveness of sins, God gives us the sacrament so that we can go and ask for forgiveness and hear, I absolve you from your sins. It's too easy to think, well, I hope I'm forgiven. I'm sorry, Lord. But it's much more reassuring and real to hear, I absolve you. And also we go to confession because not only when we sin, not only do we offend God, but we break our communion with the church, which is this body of Christ. And when we owe to receive the sacrament, we are reconciled not only with God, but also with the church. But we have all sorts of excuses that you and I come up with sometimes about why we don't partake of this marvelous sacrament. Sometimes we say, well, I haven't sinned. I mean, I really haven't done anything. I haven't killed anybody recently. I mean, I haven't robbed a bank. I thought there was only one immaculate conception, the Blessed Mother. The rest of us are not immaculately conceived. I hate to break it to you, we're not. We have the wound of original sin, and we have our actual sins, and we have faults and failings, all of us. We all need a savior. All of us. And so to say, well, I haven't sinned, means basically we haven't thought about it enough. And perhaps we're blind to a few things in our life. On the other hand, sometimes we make up the excuse and we say, God can't possibly forgive me. I've been too bad. I've done too many things that are unspeakable. Let's not give ourselves too much credit. We're not that good. God loves us so much that he will always welcome us back if we're sorry for what we have done. You and I cannot come up with a sin too great for the good Lord to forgive. We're not that witty. We can't come up with it. As our Holy Father so often says, God's mercy, God's forgiveness is greater than any sin. Remember this. And sometimes when we need to go to the sacrament and we're hearing in our mind, you cannot possibly be forgiven. That is not how Jesus speaks to us. That is the evil one, the devil. And you need to tell him where to go. Sometimes, sometimes we make up the excuse and we say, well, it's not important to receive the sacrament of confession. Not important. Look, if we commit a serious sin, mortal sin, mortal meaning deadly, we cut ourselves off from grace. God still loves us, but we do not love him. If we have committed a serious sin, mortal sin, we have cut ourselves off from grace as if we would cut off our hand. And if something like that would happen, we would need to immediately go to the hospital to get the hand put back on. And if we didn't, we would die. So too with God's grace. If through serious sin, mortal sin, grave sin, 
we fall into this and we refuse to repent, then we will die in our sins and we will go to hell. It's important to go to confession. Don't put it off, especially if we're struggling with a serious sin. This is serious business. Sometimes we're embarrassed, that's why we don't go. What is the priest going to think of me? What are other people going to think of me? What if people hear? What if Father remembers? Folks, I'm not going to remember what you tell me in confession. I hear hundreds of confessions every month, thousands every year. They're all pretty much the same. I have enough of my own sins to worry about. I don't need to remember yours. So don't be afraid. The priest is not going to think badly of you. He's not. And sometimes we, we don't go to confession because we think, well, you know, it's my own pride. I'm not going to go. What is the opposite of pride? Humility. As Jesus says in the gospel, whoever exalts himself will be humbled. The one who humbles himself will be exalted. Humility is the opposite of pride. What is the most humbling thing we can do to drag ourselves to the box and to go to confession? Ouch. <laughs> the most humbling thing we can do is to go to confession and to admit that we've done wrong. And the very act of going works against our pride. It's hard to go. It's hard to admit that I'm not perfect. But if we do that, we will become very, very good. And God will be able to work with us. How to go to confession. First, make an act of contrition. Examination of conscience. Think about what you've done made a list. If you haven't been for a while, write down what you've done. Probably want to burn the list after you're done, but write it done out anyway. Write down the list, and then after you've thought about what you've done, go through the Ten Commandments, seven virtues, seven vices, or to say, well, God, how have I not loved you? How have I not loved my neighbor? After you make an examination of conscience, then you go. And you tell the priest, bless be Father, for I have sinned. It's been this long since my last confession. The record for me is 50 years on the top end and one hour on the low end. I don't know what the person did after an hour, but they came back. You tell the priest how long it's been. And then you do a complete job of confessing your sins. All of them. All of them. All of them even the ones that are embarrassing. You know, if you, you have an illness, for example, if you have cancer and you go to the surgeon, you say, cut out 90% of it, but leave 10. Not so good. You want all of it gone. So too, when you go to the sacrament, even those things that are embarrassing, everything that we can remember, we need to say the serious sins first and the lesser sins second. Do a complete job. And then after making the confession, the priest will give you counsel and some advice and then a penance. And if the priest forgets to give you a penance, ask him for one because it's important for us to receive one. A penance and then the act of contrition. Don't worry about memorizing necessarily an act of contrition. That's one way to do it, of course. But as a priest, I hear thousands of variations of the act of contrition. Thousands. Sometimes, often, I hear, bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive <laughs> through my... I take it. It works. <laughs> In the act of contrition, we say that we're sorry and that we want to do better. There are ones that we memorize which are very good, but it needs to come from the heart. Dear Jesus, I messed up. I know you love me so much. 
I'm sorry for what I did. I want to do better. Please forgive me. Amen. Just like that. And then the words of absolution that the priest imparts. And as soon as he says, I absolve you from your sins, they're gone. We're free. A new beginning. What a blessing. God remembers our sins no more. And we ought not to remember them ourselves either. Some of you remember Archbishop Fulton Sheen, who arguably was the most famous American Catholic of the 20th century. And he often told a story about a woman that he counseled in England who came to him and said, I want to learn about the faith, but I refuse to go to confession. I will not go. And Fulton Sheen said, okay, I'll teach you about the Catholic faith and I'll help you to come back to your faith and I will not ask you to go to confession. And the woman said, I want you to promise me that you will not ask me to go to confession. And Fulton Sheen said, I will not ask you to go to confession. So for three weeks they met every day. And one day he said, you know, there's a beautiful work of art in the church next door. Could I go show it to you? And the woman said, oh, I love art. So Fulton Sheen, as he tells the story, walked the woman down the side aisle, past the confessional, and pushed her into the confessional. <laughs> he didn't ask. <laughs> and he heard her confession, and as he tells the story, a few months later, she entered into a cloistered Carmelite monastery as a nun. So. I'm asking you to go. I may resort to pushing. These two beautiful new confessionals in the back of church are very beautiful from the outside. They are much more beautiful from the inside. Much more. If it's been a while, come back. Confessions are heard here in our cathedral parish Wednesdays from 6 in the evening until 8.30 and Saturday afternoons from 2.15 until 4.30. Take advantage of the sacrament. God will always welcome you back. He loves us so much. His mercy endures forever. Let's ask the Lord to give us a second chance to receive this great sacrament of forgiveness. And if we do, our lives will be changed, our lives will be brighter, and we will be free. May God bless you.